Hi, this is Ashio, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. We're still working our way through the Sebastian mod. He's a loyal companion, and we're about to do Chapter 4. So, I'm not sure what's going to happen in the last part. We kind of... Oh god, we got still got to do a couple of tasks before we can get to that. Let's uh, visit the witness. Let's say hello to Ipsum. Us and Sebastian, we kind of got stuck in this underground facility business, and there was like a turret gun, and all kinds of stuff happened, and we, we eventually escaped that. So, let's get through this. What was that? Oh, I've got some messages. Let's see. Hey, Sebastian here. I was wondering if you could come over and spend some time together. Give me a call if you're interested. I don't think I ever gave you my address. No, you didn't. Alright, Sebastian, let's hang out. Oh, he's could have come knocking. Oh. Might as well give Sebastian that call then. Hey, this is Sebastian. Yo, yo, it's Ushio. Wanna meet up? Oh yeah, I could use the company. Let's go find his address. Yeah, I've got no idea as to what Sebastian's place is like. It took me some time to find the address. It was on the other end of town, in an area I had not visited very often. Waiting outside one of the apartment complexes, I saw Sebastian and approached him. Hey, glad you could make it. No hat today. Off duty. Yo, thanks for the invite. How have you been since our last adventure? Okay, I guess. Could be better. Since the festival's around the corner, we're trying our best to apprehend Reza beforehand. The festival alone calls for more patrols, so we're spread thin as it is. I see. It seems like you could use a break. A break would be nice. But I knew what I signed up for. It's just part of the job. Anyway, let's go inside. Sebastian's place. Make yourself at home. Is it just me, or is this a bit small? It's not the biggest, but it's enough for me. Also, the view's great. I stepped over to the window and looked outside. Oh, nice view. Very, very nice. It's nothing special. It looks amazing. I bet sunsets look lovely out there. Actually, the sunrises look the best. You should see the colours out on the ocean waters. I can imagine. Photos like that are a common decoration in homes where you couldn't see them otherwise. Uh, shall we ask about the hat? I was wondering. Oh, why am I not wearing the hat? I don't wear it during my free time. It gives everybody else the wrong impression. Do you want me to fetch it? No, you're good. Casual Sebastian. Alright. So, did you have anything in mind for the day? Well, since you seemed so prepared last time, I took the same approach. Does that mean you don't have anything planned? The plan was to have no plan. It's a bit relieving to just have company and not much to think about. In that case, I owe you a lesson on a human card game. Oh, I remember that. Did you bring any cards? Okay, I did bring some, but they look a little different. That's the German deck. I was hoping you had some, a French deck. What's, what's the difference? I, I've got, I don't know. Um, okay, I got a, I got a pack of cards on me. I reach into my pocket and pulled out a deck of cards. In that case, let's sit at the table. Okay, the game I had in mind is one called Officer's Scat. It uses the cards seven and above, including the ace. I used to play this game often with an old friend when he was still around. Sounds pleasant. It was. We filled entire evenings with it. I meant to ask, you've been here a while. Do you miss your friends? Quite a lot, yet I won't be seeing them again. Why not? When the solar flare hit, some of them were killed in the aftermath, others lost the will to live. The last few succumbed to diseases we thought were long eradicated. I'm sorry. That's fine, it's all in the past. Anyway, let me show you how to play. I'm going to have to pay attention, because I am terrible at card games. Hey, just so you know, the fully functional card games are really hard to make in Rempy, and this one is really bad about dealing with rollback in particular. For the remainder of this card game, you won't be able to scroll back, or whatever else you used to see previous lines of dialogue, since you'll be playing a random game against a real AI. I figure that's fair. Also, don't save during this game. I can't stop you, but your save will be corrupted. You can save right now, while I'm telling you this, but no later. Okay, so get that save in. But don't worry, you'll get the chance to see the rules again if you need to. Don't corrupt my game, please. First things first, after shuffling the deck, you get to cut it. It's easy to forget, but if you do, the dealer loses right away. Alright, done. Okay, now we deal the hands. What? 
on earth is going on. Okay, each of us get eight cards, four face down and four face up. This is only half of each hand, but now you get to pick the trump suit. The what? One of the four suits will beat every other suit for this game. I'll explain that part later. Okay, generally you pick whatever you have most of, or what has the highest score. If it's not clear, you can pick what I have least of. Oh, that third unter of yours is special. It will count towards whatever trump suit you pick, instead of its own unter. What? I don't know. German cards? What? What's the highest score then? I suppose I should tell you that order. Ace is 11, 10 is 10, King is 4, Oba, what's Oba is 3, Uta is 2, and the rest are all 0. So that 10 you have is pretty significant, and the Oba helps too. I'd probably pick Acorns. Acorns? What? I, I don't know these cards. Okay, I can see the Acorns on the number 10 up there. Sure, so I'm guessing it's Acorns instead of Hearts or something. Okay, okay say that I do, now what? Now I deal the rest of our hands. Sure, interesting. So you start because I dealt, but before you pick a card, I should tell you how to win a round. First off, because you're starting, you can pick any card since I'm responding, I'm limited based on what you pick, which you can use to force me to do something, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Since you picked acorns, all our answers, I see three of them right now, all count as if they were the acorn suit. Okay, so is is this, that that's what that is. Ace of Acorns, King of Bells, Nine of Leaves, Ober of Acorns, Unter... Okay, my pronunciation is probably terrible because I don't know German either. Sure, in particular, the Unter beats every other card, even though its score is low. So I should do this. Well, yeah, you could, but bear in mind that all of the Unters count as the same suit, the Trump suit. So, even though you play Leaves, I can play any of my Acorns, like my King, or either of my unters. I could actually win this round because my unter of acorns is higher than your unter of leaves. How? Despite them being considered the same suit, as the trump suit of the game, when one unter has to be compared to another, they're compared by the suit of the card. The order is acorns highest followed by leaves followed by hearts and finally bells. This is blowing my mind right now, so I'll play that card. Okay. And win the round, got two cards. Don't worry, you're just learning. Actually, since I won this round and scored a measly 4 points, I get to start. And by the way, if you total up all the scores on all the cards, it will be 120 points, so basically the first to 60 wins, though we can still keep playing. Also, we have 16 cards and play one at a time, so there will be 16 rounds, this is going to be big. Ok, now will be a good time to flip over our face down card, usually we do that right when we play the card on top of it. Interesting. Normally I'll be playing now, but I want to give you a puzzle. If you were to play a card, which would it be? I don't know. Think about it this way. I have to play the same suit you play. There are some cards you can force a win on for the round. So this. Well, yeah, but it doesn't do much for you. I have to play my eight of leaves, so you definitely win, but neither of those cards net you any score. I think I see. So this one. Now you're getting it. You're going to force a win, and you'd get ten points. So is it kind of like Hearts? This this is kind of the... Uh, I've played Windows 95. I know how to play Hearts, so I'm going to consider it like that. So there's no card under there. Do we draw one? Nope. There's no deck to draw from. We're each playing with one less card in our hand now. You can go ahead, by the way. Okay, so now he's gone with a 9 of... Is that the... No, not Bells. What is that? Leaves? You played a card in the suit I don't have. All right. So I can actually play any card in response. Oh, yeah, that's generally the case. If I couldn't play a card following suit, I can pick any card. However, you have a little advantage here. Any card I play loses, unless it's a trump card. So what if they're both trump cards? Then they'd both be in suit, and we'd be comparing the faces like we did in the first round. Okay, since I have one of those, remember, Acorn is still the trump suit. I'll go ahead and play it for the win. Okay. And we should flip our cards. And that's where those pesky leaves are. And as you can see, I'm still trading in points, but that could have been devastating if your nine of leaves was worth more. Anyway, at this point, I'll win the round again and pick a card. Probably that ace of leaves to force the win against your seven and take 11 more points. But I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, should I show him? No, let's just do it. I don't, I don't know. 
So how about leaves? Good choice. Okay, so Trump is leaves. And Sebastian has played... What's that? The tenor bells? So I have got... The king of bells. That Does that trump? That, that scores less, doesn't it? But I have to... I have to do it, don't I? Because that's the only one I've got of that type. Okay, King of Bells it is. I might be getting good at this game. Certainly looks like it. I had no choice. <laughs> okay, so what is that? That is the Uta of Hearts. I've got the Ace of Acorns. So Uta only scores two, was it? So, King? Eight. Let's go eight. Eight of hearts? No, does that... Well, that's, no, I have to... The king. Do I have to play another Uta? What can I play? I can play that Han. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm terrified. Okay, so that is a ten of hearts, which... That's a nine. That's an eight. I'll play king. Looks like we're off to a strong start. Sebastian winning. I am losing. So what is that? Uta of leaves. I've got the king of leaves. That's good for me, right? No, I'm losing. <laughs> I don't know these rules. I'm I'm having a bad day. So, ace scores more, right? Nine of leaves. I feel like I must be a few points ahead of you. Yeah, Sebastian, you are winning big time. Okay, what is that? Eight of bells. I have got... No bells. Whatever. I'm having all kinds of trouble. I'm having all kinds of trouble. So what is that? That is the Ober of Hearts. And I have got this. Can I win at least one round? One round would be nice, please. What's that? The Unter of Acorns. And I've got the Ace of Acorns. That definitely scores more, right? Why can't I play it? It won't let me play it. Fine. Leaves. I thought I had to match the type. Okay, eight of acorns. And I have got ace of acorns. Do I get points finally? Yes! <laughs> I don't understand this game. Oh, that means I get to choose. So I should pick. So he has got a ten of acorns and nine of acorns. So I have got a nine of hearts and he's got seven. I'll play hearts. That forces a win. I have to say, this is shaping up to be a nail biter. What does that mean? It means it's making me tense. I mean, what what are nails? Oh, don't worry about it. Okay, I need to pick something that they can't play. That's the king of acorns. He's got lots of acorns, and I've got... I haven't got any acorns, so I should play a seven of leaves or bells. Seven of leaves. Does that mean I... Yeah, there we go. No hard feelings. None taken. Yeah, it is very much like hearts, but I'm I'm familiar with a couple of the rules. It's kind of throwing me slightly. So, I'm going to play my Ten of Leaves and get out my last card. Am I winning? I'm catching up. Catching up. Uh, this, leaves are doing me well. I'll stick with my leaves for now. I've got 10 points. So, I've got bells. They've got the 7 bells. And nothing else. So does that mean I'm doing good? Because that... 9 is definitely higher than 7. So play the 9. Another winning trick. I'm taking the next one. Oh, by all means. Good luck with that. I'm going to play... How am I doing? Doesn't look like there's much else to score. I don't think so either. Okay. So what is the result? It's a draw. <laughs> we counted up the cards in our piles. The scores was... Oh, 46 for Sebastian. 74 for me. Oh, I won. Well, I don't think the winner's up for debate. Indeed not. Good game, though. You put up a fair fight. A little practice. And you'll be well on your way. Thanks. I think I have to show this to the rest of the team. I think they're going to enjoy it. I hope so. Anyway, let's do that one more time, if you like. Um, I think that's enough for now. I won. So I'm, I'm taking that win and I'm not going to try again. Hey again. I thought I'd politely tell you that you can roll back and save again. I hope that was a fun game. Hey, we are back in business. 
interesting game. Well, what did you think of your first game of Officer's Scat? I enjoyed it. It was a pleasant change of pace. So, who do you normally play these card games with anyway? Most of the time I play against Maverick. Bryce and Naomi usually join in though, if they're around and not busy. Do you usually get along with Maverick, I mean? Why wouldn't I? I'm sure he's a bit abrasive, but he also has a soft side once you get to know him. I remember when I started at the department, I only got to know about him through others. He was more of a quiet type, always reserved, and always seeming cold. That lasted right up until our first weekly meeting though. Back then, I didn't even know what those meetings were. Bryce just told me to stick around after work. We left work and went to Zhang's bar, the first time I met him too. After a few drinks, Maverick almost immediately loosened up, cracking jokes about me, the new guy. After those had passed, the two of us talked for a bit, and I got to know him a bit better. Honestly, I can say he's a good guy, he's just hard to understand. It's a shame you must have gotten off on the wrong foot. I see. I can't help but wonder how things would have gone if, well, I don't know, he'd probably not be quite as hostile toward you. It's probably not a surprise to you that Reza set a bad example for your kind. But I guess we'll never know. Maybe not, but do you think it's too late to set things right with him? I wouldn't say so. You just need the right opportunity. It's not that he's particularly approachable, though. I know. But maybe when the case is over, who knows, maybe you two could become friends. Now there's a scary thought. You know, he wasn't always as serious, according to the others. Did you know he had a brother once? I did not. His name is Miles, a bit older than Maverick, always his role model. Until Mav started working obsessively for the police, the two were inseparable. But Miles had a condition. Not many knew about it, save Mav and Miles himself until... Hmm... What happened? Miles had a neurodegenerative disease. It's extremely rare, but quite dangerous if left untreated. For reasons that aren't clear, dragons like us have an instinct that drives us to extreme violence. The fact that we built a society like this is nothing short of impressive, and if you ask the right dragons, a testament to the humans of myth. But every now and then, that instinct leaks through. Should I be worried? No, no, it's basically unheard of that healthy dragons fly into a rage. But when it does happen, it's terrifying. Miles' condition made him prone to this. The worst part is that he was getting treatment, but it turned out to be the wrong medication. To this day, Mav blames himself for that one oversight. What happened to Miles? A while before I came onto the force, this sleepy little town was shaken up by a serial killer. Miles? Yes. By the time Bryce and Matt found him, it was too late. He was basically nothing but instinct, and his feral nature drove him to attack and feed on anyone he could find. If you've ever wondered where Bryce got the scars on his neck, well, I see. Miles might have killed Bryce too, if Matt hadn't. Killed him first. Anyway, I hope you can understand why Matt can be like that sometimes. He has a lot of guilt on his shoulders, I've heard, and he'll stop at nothing to make sure something like that never happens again. I guess I understand Maverick a bit better now. But you said you'd never met him before that happened. No, I was the new guy on the police force when I moved here from the farm. All of that happened before. Do you ever miss the farm life? Or your family, for that matter? Farm life was a little too quiet for me. Nothing ever happened. As for my family, of course I miss them. I visit them twice a year. Once during the solstice holiday, and another time near their birthdays. Who's there? My mother and father. There's no one else. I'm an only child. The siblings would have been nice, but I think my parents had enough on their minds with me. So you're a bit of a troublemaker? I wouldn't say that. I just like to explore and wander off, without telling anyone of course. Since my family was already busy tending a farm, they didn't watch me all that often. Once I was old enough though, they didn't mind my disappearances as much, as long as I was home for dinner and had my homework done. How did that work? Well, in the morning I'd run to school, and in the afternoon I'd run wherever I pleased. So you weren't homeschooled? No, most children in that village went to a normal school. It was a sprawling little town, but, well, we're quick on our feet. Did you have many friends? A few. It was a small enough place where all the children knew each other. I was social enough, but my real home was the wilderness everywhere else. The village was just too predictable, you know? This town doesn't seem much like the wilderness, though. I'm not saying I've outgrown that, but at least exciting things happen here on occasion. 
I have enough here to see and be entertained by, and nature isn't far either. Compared to here, farm life is just mind-lumbingly monotonous. I see. Was it hard for you to leave it behind? I wouldn't say so. The hardest part was not seeing everyone I knew quite as much as I used to. I might have struck it out alone many a time, but I can't say I wasn't acquainted with them by that point. Just as hard as getting a handle of what was happening here, since it was so different compared to home. Which of them do you prefer? I'm happy with the way it is now. It's not like I don't visit every now and then, but I enjoy the pace here. It's the best of both worlds. Sebastian raised his hands behind his head and leaned back into his chair. The only thing that bothers me about this whole arrangement is that my parents bother me constantly about finding a mate. I keep telling them I don't... And to be honest, now that I have a fiancé, well... Wait, you have a fiancé? Yeah, but I feel like my parents would make it awkward. Since I've been on the receiving end of 20 questions, I suppose I should ask you something. Like what? Do you think he would have done the same thing in my position? I'd have stayed at the farm? I'd have probably done the same thing. I would have moved to a bigger city. Um... I'd have done the same thing. Farm life can be pretty boring, but I don't like getting lost in the big city, if you know what I mean. Ooh, what's that noise? Seems like someone's hungry, that is my stomach rumbling. Yeah, I might have accidentally skipped lunch today. Let's see. I'm a little package too. You want me to make something? Um... What have you... I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be like a bad guest, but yes please, I'm hungry. Unless you're planning on preparing that fish from a few days ago. Don't worry. I saw how well you handled it. Besides, I'm not a big fan of seafood myself. That's more Naomi's thing. Sebastian made his way to the kitchen, and I watched him from the couch as he made his way around. I did, however, get a peek of Sebastian putting what looked like a prepared pre-packaged food thing from the fridge. Not long after, I saw him stirring something around in the skillet. I was wondering, why do you use stoves when you could just use fire? Well, first off, not all dragons breathe fire. Aquatic dragons spit venom, for example. Also, cooking with one's fire can be unhygienic. Zhang isn't allowed to use this fire at a yearly barbecue, for example, because he managed to make everything taste bad. He said he was sick, to be fair, but... Anyway, perhaps the most important reason. It's a little bit unsafe indoors. This stuff is flammable, after all. I see. A couple moments later, he pulled out and chopped some vegetables, and stirred it into the now sizzling pan's contents. Once it was warm and fragrant, he fetched two plates and evenly portioned out the meal. He deftly set the plates on the table and beckoned me over, but just as quickly rushed to the back of the kitchen and grabbed two wine glasses and a familiar looking bottle. Oh right, you need cutlery, don't you? Oh, yes please. Sebastian went back to the kitchen and dug around loudly for a little while before returning with one set of utensils. Where's yours? I don't need any. How do you normally eat something if you have to cut it up though? You mean like this? Sebastian set his muzzle straight onto the plate, scooped up some meat right into his maw. With a wrench of his head, he tore it along his sharp teeth. That's disgusting. Uh, awesome. What do you mean? The way you eat's awesome. I couldn't get away with doing that at home. Thanks, I guess. Returning to the table, he filled both glasses generously and set one in front of me as I took my seat. Uh... What's the wine for? Oh, I didn't even think about it. It's a family tradition to open a bottle of wine in the presence of company. Sebastian raised his wine glass. What would we toast this evening? Wonderful day, beautiful friendship, excellent dinner, learning something new, or you? Uh, how about an excellent dinner? You really think it's that good? You haven't even tried it yet? It smells delicious though. In that case, let's not delay any further. To an excellent dinner. They then promptly dug into the meal. The meat he prepared was impressively good, crisp on the outside, juicy and pink on the inside. That's amazing, Sebastian. Where'd you learn to cook like this? My mother taught me. Have you ever considered being a cook? I enjoy cooking only on occasion, not every day. I don't think I could do it as well if it were demanded of me every time, you know? Plus, I like my job with the police. Once I finished my plate, apparently much more slowly than Sebastian, I noticed he was looking in my direction. Well, he really looking. Okay. <laughs> Avert your eyes. Feeling a bit self-conscious there. Struggling to come up with something to say, 
I blurted out the first thing that came to mind. Uh, how about we watch a movie? I don't have that many movies, I'm more of a book person. I could take a look at what I have though, anything specific? Fantasy, action, paranormal, science fiction, comedy, horror, non-fiction. About, I don't know, what, what, what do we go with? Um, how about a comedy? Uh, well, I have this one movie my parents gave me as I was leaving to become an officer myself. I think they thought it would be funny. And it was. Please don't tell them they were right, or any of my co-workers for that matter. Cross my heart. Thanks. Sebastian picked a case from the shelf and inserted it into the player before seating himself on the couch and getting comfortable next to me. The movie was about a group of young adults at a police academy as they were undergoing intense training. Of course, as a comedy, the most improbable things happened, and the cadets screwed up royally in each case with minimal consequence. I was chuckling at their antics steadily through the whole movie. Even Sebastian, who looked like he was trying to keep a straight face, snickered once or twice. The movie finished happily, with all of the trainees graduating with distinction. Wow, how often have you seen that movie? Quite a lot, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Would you look at that, it's already dark out. I didn't think that movie would take that long. How time flies. I can't let you go home at this hour, there's still a murderer on the loose out there. I suppose I should escort you to your home then. I mean, I, I could just stay here. I don't have many spots to sleep though. There's this lumpy small couch. I could offer my bed. Um, I'll take the couch, it's fine. No problem, I'm the guest. You should keep your comfort in your bed, and you'll need all the rest you can get for tomorrow. True. Good night. Good night. With that, he slid through one of the doors and closed it gently. I ain't gonna take his bed off him. That's just mean, but we made it through to another day. Yay me. And that was another little episode where we hung out with Sebastian. I hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to check out the next chapter in the next video. I think it might be chapter five. We might start seeing some endings very soon. This is Usho signing off and hopefully I will see you next time.